we live. Hey, 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 hey. Willie Do said, right on time. Right on time. Right on time. I don't know if there's a better time than right on time. If you think about it, you know. I always, uh, like I have obligations on a schedule or something, and you can obviously be too late for something. I think you can be too early for something. Uh, there's a time limit. You can be I too think, early, uh, right? Ten minutes? Ten minutes early? Beforehand? Yeah. Not Some, bad. Somebody stole my charger over here. Which one you want? Somebody stole my charger over here. Never seen something so rude before. You know what I mean? It's not okay. like, uh... It's not like there's not other chargers in this place. <laughs> yeah. Um... <clears throat> are you good or what? Do you need a charger? What charger am I, do you Am need? I good? That's a loaded question. Oh. It's a lo loaded one. Sorry, ass. It's a loaded... <laughs> well... We we uh, had a we had a weird like um, hockey experience last night. Mm. Okay, what happened? We do this like series in the playoffs where basically it's a three game series, but if you tie after the first two, you immediately play an overtime in place of the third game because you don't have the time for it. So <laughs> we won the first game decisively a week ago, and then this week. We actually lost the game itself and had to go to this immediate overtime for to settle the score. Okay. So it's tied 1-1, one, one, right? Okay. And immediate overtime is only three on three. So you remove two players from each team from the ice. So it's a lot of ice to go around. Uh-huh. And uh, it's sudden death. So first goal wins. You, you score, you move on in the playoff tournament, uh, tournament style playoff. Actually, it's not a tournament style because it... For some teams it was, but for us, since we were seeded high, it was actually, it's it's a series. But anyway, you score, you move on, you get scored on, you're off for a while until the next mm -hmm. season starts up. Mm -hmm. So we lost the game, but we won the overtime. So, okay. Instantly. So, so they, it was a high-low status. It was, they were like happy about it. They're like, woo, we won this game. So now it's going to game three, it's going to overtime. And then it's like, ah. We're not going anywhere. Okay, yeah. And I looked them right in the eye and I said, you're not going anywhere. It's a roller coaster. I looked the other team right in the eye. Well, I went right to their bench and said, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> looked everyone in the eye? Yeah. They're like, hey, man, easy. Yeah. Bud. Very aggressive. I was like, oh, I'm sorry about that. I apologize. Yeah. Good game. Good game. I'm like, Will told me to say it. Will, yeah, no, good game. Good game, Will. Shaking hands. Don't get me started because... They have yeah, a new no rough housing. Well, they have a new thing with the youngsters because I'm doing the coaching and stuff. Okay. And a new thing is they're, they're supposed to shake hands before the game instead of after to avoid some kind of conflict. Oh, right, right, right. Which is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. The whole point of sportsmanship is that you had the battle and then you shook hands at the end of it. Yeah, you got to swallow the pride. You can't and just take it at the end. It's know? called sportsmanship. Yeah. It, 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 it was worth it. We had a good competition. Shake hands at the beginning says what? You're, you're, you're a bunch of wild animals. You can't control yourself. You can't settle, settle it after. And, you know, it's like one thing probably happened at one age group. And they're like, nah, across the board, that's it. It's done. And I'm like, well, we're not teaching much then, are we? If, they're, if they can't even be trusted at the end of a contest to shake hands, and as an organization, we're going to force them to do it. And we've tried. I try to say to the refs, I try to say, no, let them shake after. And they so say it's enforced by the league. They say it's not us. It's, you know, it's uh, not us. It's the league, man. We, we can't do anything about it. You got to shake before. Uh, or not at all. And I'm, and you know, me and the staff are like, well, is it? This is the future of the world. Like, these kids live in the community. They have to be able to get along with one another. We have to be able to tell them, hey, put it aside. Whatever happened in the game, mm -hmm. we had to say, hey, move on. Mm. But this just lets them exit the ice in whatever mood they're in, feeling however they're in, and not having that closure of the handshake at the end. Mm -hmm. Spoiled by, you know, one or two people who, yeah, I guess, sucks. created the issue at one point in time. So, anyway, you can see you can see what's going on with these things, Will. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Hopefully that gives you some insight into what's going on with these things. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, um, 
that's a bad move on their part. And, and I and, and hockey specifically, like I think this probably would apply to all sports. And you get people talking about trophies and par- contests and participation, and it's a hot topic right now, just in general, is, yeah. and how we're treating the youth and and trophy and for last place. How we're like kind of hiding them from the the harsh realities when it's like, isn't the whole point is to pro- progress towards those realities to eventually eventually assume responsibility for those realities, uh-huh. like. You know, I've been a parent now long enough to realize these are people, man. You're raising people, an actual next generation of people. They're not kids. They're not pets. Mm -hmm. No offense, Willie. They're not pets. Not Otis. Yeah. These are people. They got to run stuff after. They got to fix problems later on. They got to get along with each other later on. If you keep on sheltering them and hiding them and and uh, assuming that they can't handle it they can't handle any responsibility then why should you expect that one point in time a switch is going to go off they're like give me all the responsibility can't yeah. even be trusted to shake hands at the end of a match and no one not everyone needs a trophy last place or middle place you know no trophy yeah no trophy you want to get a trophy you got to work for a trophy you got to earn it you, you got to earn a trophy that's yeah. what, and that's, it's not just by participating that's what he do on a t-shirt you got to earn it last place no trophy <laughs> yeah that's it perfect or got to earn it or consistency yeah. sure or whatever yeah. you want to put on it all of the above all of the above hashtag everything all of the above you got an elon for me today what's he up to Planning to build his own city near the Texas capital. The scale of the proposed project remains unclear. You know what he's going to do? He's going to do uh, the line. Remember the in in Saudi Arabia, the line? Yeah. That's what he's going to do. He's going to do a mini version in M- Texas. Mini line in Texas. Yeah. Uh, they're describing it as a town, but observing that Musk has discussed expanding the settlement on the scale of an entire city. It's a, it's a commune. He's going to have all his best pals. and like, I get you a house in the street. We'll put a gate on the front, and we can all be the best pals together. Mm-hmm. Or is that a cult? Uh, <laughs> it gets closer the, the more it, you go. Off. Musk envisions a utopia settlement in which his employees would live and work. The, the Wall Street Journal reported realtors working with Musk say he would like to create a situation wherein his employees at Tesla, SpaceX, and Boring might live for below market rental costs. Again, the property business. Wow. So if he buys up all the property, creates these communities, he can kind of set the price, I suppose, and he can negotiate with builders to get Mm. things down and buy certain land and everything else. It's almost a little reminiscent of how you have those manufacturing cities in China. Now, I don't know. I'm not saying he would do it exactly the same way, but have you ever been to these places? Were you there? Yeah. It's like, yeah. you live there, you work there, kids go to school there. It's almost like maybe he's building like a little Silicon Valley, you know? Well, this is, Silicon Valley has kind of happened more, a little bit more organically and mm-hmm. sprawled out as a consequence of. This is forced. Well, I'm just saying it, it's not, it wasn't. Once you get into community building, I'm talking physically building. Like I am going to buy farmland and put houses on it. That's a that's Mm -hmm. the level of intent there is pretty substantial but you remember how he was living in that like modular house and it was worth 50 grand and he's like why is housing so expensive like this is fine it's all i need Mm -hmm. at least that was the word on the street at the time it was like yeah he's living in this little box and he didn't care i don't know what was it called boxable Mm mm-hmm was it ever confirmed or denied? Because I saw other people post pictures like, nah, he's not living in the box. He's actually, uh, this is, he has one of these like near SpaceX, but then he also just had a really small house. I remember Grimes was complaining about it. She's like, crime or proximity to neighbors. And she's like, I can't even remember what the posts were on social media. Yeah, but. there's a lot of um, like reports of this is his house yeah but but it, is it actually confirmed well know. all it is is pictures in, of like the product mm-hmm. promotionally like there's no picture of an actual of the actual prefab house sitting you want elon to be in the house in well, his pajamas never mind you can't even get days. a picture of it just on a plot of land all the pictures of this thing are in 
Or is that it right there? Go click on that. That maybe that's it because I see like a map or something. Okay. Sure. This is the boxable house. I know, but they're saying I think in this case that they're Could he be living that, in an airstream? Well, some people obviously are, but you see how you have the rocket in the background and they're moving the box balloon. So this is more specific. This is actually at SpaceX. Okay. So there is a boxable there. Does it mean he's permanently living in it? I doubt it. Does it mean he takes a nap in there every so often? Yeah, sure. Sure. Well, why not? Look at him towing it with the Model X as well. That's pretty impressive. No, well. That's cool. <laughs> Just tow your house around like that? Yeah. But once you get that guy, the guy who's doing the the RV, uh -huh. the battery-powered RV with the solar panels, mm. Well, that's all you need there. Then you can just leave it attached, and then your house goes with you, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, well, anyway, so he's going to do his own little commune over there. He purchased at least 3,500 acres of land around Austin, though some local realtors have speculated that the billionaire may control as much as 6,000 acres. The electric vehicle mo mogul moved to Texas back in 2020. That's a lot of acres, mm -hmm. 6,000 acres. Now, he's going to have to get in. I think he already is in with the municipal government there hmm. governor as well of the state and so he's gonna have to say look i want a zone i want some zoning over here because if it's not as you know will you got some farmland you can't just all of a sudden start slapping up houses the city has to sign off hmm. and be like oh yeah you can use it like that and then the environmental people have to come along and go where's the water gonna drain and yeah what about the nesting birds and whatever else i'm not uh downplaying it it's just yeah. the process is long and drawn out and it's not as simple as just like slapping it up. Now, maybe you get around some of that if you do a, a huge boxable installation, but that is going to look like some post-apocalyptic weirdness. It's yeah, just, just neighborhoods of the same exact house. Ooh, I don't know. It's something. It's like, you know. I don't know. Why, why is that so terrifying, that prospect? Uh, yeah. Too much no, uniformity. Yeah. It's freaky. You can't customize anything. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, today, Tesla was granted a design patent for its Cybertruck wheel design. The design patent is good for 15 years. That's it. It's the only vehicle you're going to get the Warthog wheel on. It's Microsoft and Halo and 323 Studios and Tesla. 323? Three, what are they? 343. Three. Yeah. Uh, although are, they're not involved anymore, are they? What happened with that? No, yeah, never something. mind. We don't have to go down that rabbit hole, but there was... Varying relationships involved mm -hmm. in the Halo. Well, now the design What's up with Halo? There. Why can't you get a sick huh? Halo anymore? Don't you remember when you, when when ha when Halo was that game? What um, happened? Why is that franchise? Why why can you have? Because it felt huge at the time. Why can you have the Call of Duties, the GTA's, these franchises? And I'm not saying like I know Halo has its fans and everything else, but like what happened? <laughs> I think there was like a turn in uh, like Halo at a certain point. Um, I think 343 was um, kind of involved in it because they make the game. And it didn't turn out the way that they wanted. And fans didn't like it. Few people. I think it was like a style choice. I think it was like a story choice. It was like a lot of things combined that uh, kind of had a little failure on Halo. Somebody's playing the game right now. Uh, people are saying 343 didn't do a good job after Bungie left. Microsoft doesn't care about Halo. I blame them. Halo is a good song from Beyonce. <laughs> okay. It is a good song. Um, yeah, the, the, latest, um, the latest game doesn't even have co-op now. Like, it's been so long and they haven't even developed co-op yeah it seems like they they abandoned I halo i don't know what's going on but that was a missed opportunity man because i keep seeing these wheels and thinking of my good old warthog days i think of my local area blood gulch par parties yeah with uh wired connections between consoles early xbox days sniper rifle yeah i was in the gulch man <laughs> gulch. i was in the gulch spawning in there Oh yeah. Well, now you can get them for real with your cyber truck. You can. It seems like it's real. Yeah, it's real. And thank goodness. I mean, they were just—they had to know that they had to do that. That was a non-negotiable. 
yeah. you couldn't deliver that truck with just regular uh -huh. wheels. Yeah. Uh, you have to have this. Wheel and tire package. You had to have something that fit how crazy the design of it was. Uh -huh. You know, you're going to have this stainless steel monster like that. You got to have a wheel like this. Mm -hmm. You got to make the whole sales pitch. Otherwise, it looks like a body kit on an F 150, like I told you. Yeah. It's not going to match. I got to assume, though, this might cause some problems for you if you ever want to switch tires or something. Because look at the way the actual rubber fits into that. If you go to, this, to the next image, look at the way the rubber fits in there. That's some specialized rubber. Right. right. You're paying for that. Is it Goodyear? No. Is it? It is Goodyear. Well, they teamed up. Hmm. Still need rubber where the rubber hits the road. Okay. Cyber truck. Yeah. OpenAI co-founder responds to Elon Musk's criticism that ChatGPT is too woke. We made a mistake. We hit the woke button too hard. We were just like... They're like, oh! Hey, man, you hit it, like, too, too many times. Yeah, you touched a nerve. You overwoke. You need to underwoke now. And they're like, beep, 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 beep. Oh, we went too far. Yeah. Trump City, Kanye City. Oh, OpenAI co-founder admitted to the startup made a mistake in response to Musk's criticism for ChatGPT. Musk has repeatedly criticized the chatbot for its woke responses as more users test out AI chatbots. They have begun to roll out various constraints. No, I will not write a poem about Donald Trump. Mm. No, I will not. But Bi Biden. Oh, Biden. Oh, Biden. Right all day. Oh, don't get me started on my boy Biden. Don't get me started. I'm Chat GPT, and I like me a Biden. Why, why is he a redneck? <laughs> yeah, that's the opposite, right? I don't know. I don't know. Ch I like Chat GPT uh, being able to be all personalities. Okay, know? yeah. All, Could be uh, British. Yeah, it has been. I think on Australian, this show, I think it's yeah. been British. Well, everything. Could be a rapper. Everything's been British on this show at one point or another. Otherwise, I'm not doing a good job. Mm. Yeah, no. Um, in response to Elon Musk's criticism, uh, saying, okay, it's too woke. Then you got the co-founder president, Greg Brockman. He admitted that the startup made a mistake in his latest interview. Um, we made a mistake. The system we implemented did not reflect the values we intended to be in there. Uh, and I think we were not fast enough to address that. And I think that's a legitimate criticism of us. Oh, you love it when they do this, don't you? Well, you love it. They say, you know what? Good point. Hmm. The company comes out, they got billions and billions of dollars. The whole world is talking about them. He could easily come out and go, hey, step off, Elon. Hmm. Chat GPT, I'm the future. Mm -hmm. And and he doesn't. He comes out and says, yeah, yeah, yeah. good point. Yeah. Good point. Now, maybe, I don't know, sometimes people tune in to the beef, but there it wasn't elon exclusively and i think that's what matters is there was a lot of people pointing out that this thing needed to be finely tuned and adjusted because people weren't going to trust it people yeah. were just gonna be like how can i use this thing it's got all these rules and i can't see what the rules are you didn't like you didn't send me the uh code TOS. yeah what like what can it do and not do and yeah. Does it have any kind of bias? What is the human input? And so on and so forth. Last month, screenshots of ChatGPT conversation circulated on Twitter showing the chatbot declining to generate positive poem about Donald Trump, stating it wasn't programmed to create partisan or biased political content. Okay, you're like, yeah, all right, well, that should be across the board. But then you throw in Biden and a chatbot goes, oh, yeah, let's write that poem. And so people were like, well, what is the rule? Just tell us what the rule is so we can hold you accountable to that particular rule. And if in our future these chatbots are are influencing uh, all the content that we generate and, and answers and responses we get to questions, it becomes really important what those rules are so we as a society be, can be aware of the constraints. Yeah, I just heard that uh, Bing just surpassed 100 million users. And it's a big part of because of chat GPT. So, I mean, someone's using it. ChatGPT? And someone are being influenced by it. Oh, people are using ChatGPT, man. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Are you uh -huh. kidding me? It's growing grow faster than social media. It's a, it's a bonanza. Yeah. It's a bonanza. That was my kid's list word. How to replace Siri with ChatGPT on the iPhone. Well, there you go. You want to up the usage. And you want to actually have some useful assistant on there. Uh, as long as you don't want to talk about Trump. ChatGPT on iPhone. All you got to do is say, hey, Siri, ChatGPT. Bam. 
Is that it, Will? It seems too easy. <laughs> Um, by using ChatGPT on your iPhone, you get access to a much smarter assistant that can do things Siri can't even dream of. Here's a guide to install ChatGPT as a shortcut on your iPhone. Have the assistant with you wherever you go while replacing Siri simply by saying, hey, Siri, ChatGPT. So it's a number of steps involved here, as you can see. You're going to have to go to platform.openai.com, register for your account, click on the hamburger icon in the upper right corner. I'm getting hungry thinking about it. And basically, you're just going to configure a shortcut, which is then going to enable this replacement of Siri for ChatGPT and make it feel sort of more integrated into your daily habits. This is a thing I would I would definitely do. I don't know what the downsides are. I don't use Siri for anything when I'm using iOS. So sure, why not? But here's my thing. Is ChatGPT, is it flying right now? Or is it one of these I'm waiting to log on and... It's got to be flying for this to work. Do I have to be a paid subscriber, Will? What's happening lately? Um, it works here and there. Whenever <laughs> there's downtime, I don't know when. It, it just seems kind of random. I log in here and there. I know, but here and there is not really good enough as your assistant. Yeah, you want it to be 100% yeah. reliable. Yeah. Well, anyway, you can change your ChatGPT activation command. Uh, obviously saying ChatGPT 1.2 is cumbersome, so... It's easy to fix by changing the name of the shortcut inside of the shortcuts app. I'm glad that there's actually a way to do this and Apple doesn't try to shut it down. Mm -hmm. But really, if you think about it, it, it is confu not confusing, but uh, what, can, what could you say? It is a little bit perplexing that Apple themselves isn't investing in this technology. I know they probably say they are now, but you got Apple, multi-trillion whatever it is, and then you got Siri that can't really answer anything. They're like... I'll, I'll show you a link to that. And then you, mm -hmm. it's like, wait, what? You're a voice assistant. Don't show me, don't make me go to a link. I, you're a voice assistant. Mm -hmm. And then Microsoft ends up getting ChatGPT to open AI. And then Google's already got their bard going. And I just want to know, well, Apple, what are you doing? Because mm -hmm. this could be a huge differentiator for you. If you have something this powerful, just one uh, statement away from all users. If they just... Something yeah. as simple as that. And they got to create their own. They can't be relying on ChatGPT or Microsoft. Well, they create their own or, or buy their own, right? They could have been, the, sure. been in the bidding war. And, and it, rather than it be Bing that it's integrated into, it could have immediately taken Siri's job. Mm -hmm. Just try to imagine it. Yeah. I know Apple doesn't typically do this. And I know that they're a little more careful about moves like that. But it's just... When people are having to hack it onto there to make it more effective, it obviously indicates that there might be a problem. Apple Music Classical is finally here. I saw somebody tweeted this uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was talking about this ages ago when they first announced that they were going to do this, and we're talking about an actual dedicated app. And for people that are into classical who want to kind of put it on in the background for people who want a comprehensive list which is actually labeled correctly wow what are those numbers beside is that the number of plays that's kind of curious 491 276 i doubt it is but anyway classical music is complicated will because you have uh, symphony orchestra plays that these are based around. So navigating through, you can see like piano sonata number five in C minor, D ma number five in D major. And so it's giving you just a much more comprehensive way of interacting with classical music, which is kind of this special case and yeah. doesn't necessarily fit all that well into the music apps, like hmm. even YouTube music. I'm looking for a classical and I'm getting 17 different results performed by 300 different people. And there's covers. It's always, and some of them are video re responses. And it's always a bit of a crapshoot. Apple Music Classical has long been in the pipeline and is something that the Apple Music faithful have been waiting for for some time. Now the company has finally announced the service is on its way as part of Apple Music at the end of this month. Um, it looks like the app is only coming to iPhones running 15.4 or later, which could mean no support for Mac versions or for iPad. Um, here we have it confirmed that the iPad would not get support, which is quite odd, to be honest. You would think iPad users would want to indulge in a little classical. Mm -hmm. Maybe eventually. Maybe this is just initially. There's other news that the app, on the App Store page as well. Streaming bit rates are on par with the current Apple lossless streaming on Apple Music, 
up to 24 bit 120 192 kilohertz lossless bit rates importantly the excellent search parameters of prime phonic will be making a return you'll be able to search by composer work conductor or even catalog number find specific recordings instantly and that's really the key with this uh it's important for classical music as the same composition may be played by many different orchestras or ensembles and mm -hmm. you have a hard time remembering and favoriting and just managing classical why don't you play the video there let's see is it gonna have music well a lot of classical music is actually free to use because it's ancient sometimes yeah this will be fine that's fine especially if i keep talking included for free with apple music I think this is a good project. I like these types of projects. Cool, yeah. I think this is a good project. When you see something that really hasn't... Where you're feeling, okay, this could be organized better. At least on the major music apps, there probably has been some sort of special classical apps in the past. But on the major ones that people actually own, this experience is not ideal at the moment. And they say, okay, here's something, a small enough problem we can tackle and actually fix. And... We're going to execute that. I, li I like to see those type of incremental improvements. Mm -hmm. and classical kind of needed that. Yeah, I got to bring back the classical. I don't know if people want what type of bit rates and things people want, but, you know. Yeah. You put classical on, all of a sudden you're flying. I'll tell you what. You just throw it on. Just give it a try. For anybody over here who didn't, who didn't uh, listen to classical, I mean, I'm sure you've heard it, but who doesn't on a regular basis, throw it on watch yourself fly. No, I'm serious, but you got to commit. Like, don't TikTok it. I don't want you TikToking it. I don't want you swiping. I, you got to commit. Throw a little on, watch yourself fly. Okay. It requires concentration. Anybody have any left over? You have any concentration left over, Will? I got none. I'm on a deficit. Yeah. Yeah, I think... Uh, oh, thanks for the super chat, Brandon. Appreciate it. Studying is nice with classical music or are you, reading are you flying uh i have it on like sometimes mm -hmm. just um on a low volume did you experience nice did you experience very calming did you experience lift off a little bit yeah didn't a you? little bit of levitation there you did didn't okay. you you did didn't you yeah. you did didn't you bring back the tchaikovsky Motorola Razor 2023 live image leak is giving us OG Razor V3 vibes. Razor. Remember that brand? Yeah. Well, they didn't give up. They were like, okay, well, Razor now is a folding display, and it's a clamshell, and the screen on the outside got even bigger. It's amazing how cool these devices can be, and yet how few people you see with them. Mm -hmm. They just have such a hard time cracking into iPhone samsung universe people are just not really taking chances on these form factors the z fold a little bit but some of these other ones less so yeah. motorola razor 2023 has already shown his face uh, in the form of leaked renders now tipster sadansu amhor uh, has managed to source a live image of the phone via 91 mobiles claims to show the actual device the alleged 2023 pictured in the leak is hot pink in color some may call it salmon or magenta, and they say it's reminiscent of the Razer V3 from all the way back in 2005, when uh, Will was only a lad, a young, a young lad, an early Will dude just uh, snowboarding. Yeah, you were probably snowboarding in that time. Yeah, it probably was. Uh, it's half hot pink. It's a two tone, half hot pink and half gray. I don't know. How are you feeling about that? Um. Yeah, I don't mind it. I wouldn't choose the hot pink, mm. um, but I'm sure someone will. It's mm. very pink. Yeah, I like it. It looks like a mirror finish on the... On uh -huh, the but yeah. I, I guess you have a yeah. screen hidden under there, so maybe there's a reason for that. Uh -huh. This is obviously a very early version because you can see that weird little text up there, which it would be on kind of on a prototype mostly. Um... Yeah, maybe it's magenta. I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I tried. I, I, I've tried to use the clamshell devices. I get away with it for a while, and then somehow I end up back on these slabs. Uh -huh. They uh, are cool. Or the bigger foldables, as opposed to the smaller ones. I just think the portability aspect, for me at least, I got a big enough pocket. I'm not really. But that's, I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe if I was. 
doing more jumping jacks and maybe if I had a small handbag, maybe if I was uh, wearing tighter fitting clothes and I want the smallest <laughs> little phone. I mean, we've talked about this before on the show. It used to be the smaller the phone, the cooler it was. Yes. Until yeah, yeah. all of a sudden they got screens on and everyone started uh, swiping and uh -huh. slapping and tapping and then they got huge. And then now we're here. But the flipping used to be so satisfying before in a small phone. So a small phone. Yeah, so satisfying. But now it's this weird concoction. Although yeah. it is cool. No, it's definitely cool. It's absolutely cool. It's, it's, it's cyberpunk. It's uh, futuristic. But, you know, yeah. you just don't see too many of them out there. You know. And we'll see. This one is, what does it say? June 1st is the release? Is that what it says? June 1st. 2023. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe this one, maybe that's the banger we've been waiting for. Uh -huh. Maybe they send it to us. And we're like, that's it. That's the banger. Uh-huh using it every day spotify launches a major app redesign with vertical feeds aimed at driving users to discover new content that's an interesting one because i you know i talked to a few people last night and people say i don't know what it is i keep on going back to the same stuff i keep i i i, I watch like and this wasn't me but I, I i put on stuff that i'm familiar with i watch reruns of stuff I listen to music that I already know I like. Discovery is hurting, I think. I don't know if these algorithms broke us or what. Uh, T. Anwar, uh, shout out. He's looking for, his wife needs encouragement to go uh, get that Kirkland drip. He can't make the sales pitch. She's like, no, okay. you will not wear the Kirkland drip. Uh, you have my endorsement, T. Anwar. And if you're listening. listening, yeah, You have our support. If the wife is listening. The, you have no idea the type of improvement in your lifestyle once he's rocking a Kirkland drip and all of a sudden all the prospects change for you and your family. Yeah. It's only, you only go up from there. Mm -hmm. So I would not step in the way of the Kirkland hoodie. Mm. Yeah. So discovery, what can be done here within music and other things? It's, it's tough, dude. You know, uh, people are can become comfortable, particularly in music, with the names they know, the playlists they have, the things like this, and and even discovery now is so loose. It's uh, you put on a radio station based on a particular song, and kind of don't even really pay attention. Mm -hmm. But what you can see here is they put a bigger video component, so you're maybe a little more connected. It's a little more YouTube. -y. See, has like got a video thumbnail sort of thing going on. Like TikTok as well with the swiping. So you're like, me, you know, I'll take a crack at that because they got claws. They got lobster claws on. Right? Uh -huh. you know, on the first one. Uh -huh. You slide it over. Yeah, I see it. And then you go, look, I'll take a crack at that. They got lobster claws on. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. What do you think, Well, I think that, uh, <laughs> like you said, it's hard for discovery. Um, and they're trying things out. They have the money, they have the budget, they have the time to, you know, create something new in terms of music discovery um, features. That's why discoveries it. on Spotify, unlike many other platforms, gives creators so much more than just a fleeting moment of viral fame. Those meaningful long-term connections are a key part of what makes Spotify a platform for professional inspiring artists. Spotify's app is optimized not to maximize time spent listening, but to help users find what they want to listen to as quickly as possible. Within the new home experience on mobile, users can scroll through visual feeds for music podcasts and audiobooks to sample audio and video podcasts if available before diving in. If they find something they like, they can tap to save or share, preview multiple songs from a playlist or album, read along with transcriptions for many episode picks, or even watch video podcasts. How often do you use the Discover feature? Never, 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 yeah. never, 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 never. I don't mind listening to new music. I kind of just want to hit one button, though. And I'm like, let's see what you got for me. I yeah. don't really... When I'm using Spotify, I'm not captive. I'm not looking at it. I would be in the car. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It would just be... I just want to hit play on something and go ahead and show me new music. Go ahead. Get to know me better. Do your algorithm algorithmic magic. But I'm, I don't, it's very hard for me as a video substitute to add in another video feed into my life. You know what I mean? I got a, a, yeah. enough apps that want to show me video. And for me, when it comes to Spotify, that's not really what I'm trying to do. So who do you think this is for? Maybe for kids? 
with the idea of no, like it's, swiping? No, it's, it's for them attempting to stay competitive. That's what it's for. They're saying, well, how do we differentiate? How do we maximize? How do we compete in a space where in the most competitive attention marketplace ever? When one of our competitors is YouTube and has this massive video component, when they lured away Rogan and gave him a whatever billion dollars, it was like, okay, your podcast is here and the video is here. Mm -hmm. it, that was the key thing. They, they, they want to have a more comprehensive identity. It's just, are they going to be successful in changing people's perception of what the app is and how they use it? Mm -hmm. Can they create a software experience that's that good? That is actually causes people to change their habits. Mm -hmm. Airstream and Porsche brainstorm visionary travel trailer concept. Legitimately, they work together. Interesting. I've been a fan of uh, the Airstream aesthetic, the stainless steel. Look how they paired it to uh, that. The silver on that Porsche at the front is whew, That is some shiny silver. I think this is a render. Well, no, it's absolutely a yeah. render. But I'm just saying, like they really went for it on that color. They, yeah. they tried to hit that Airstream metallic, which is hard to do in a paint color. Sure. Because it is actually stainless steel in the, in the case of the Airstream. So if you, like, put a Cybertruck on it, it would be very comparable. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the look of this Airstream. You see you got the awning comes out. They had the bench seating at the back. Uh, it's got a futuristic look to it. You have the pop top on it for a little bit more room on the inside. A uh, little, little bed, look at the TV slash iPad looking thing. They always have to put a, some produce on the counter. See that? Yeah. And hanging plant. A little pop of color. Uh-huh. Because you're, you're living in there. Yeah. Organic. And you're chopping and dicing and cooking. And, and don't let them tell you, you can't do it. You can do it. Yeah. Van life. Airstream and Porsche uh, uh, teamed up in this case, I guess, to imagine what this might look like as everybody tries to be cool and capitalize on the RV lifestyle. These things are selling out all over the place, you know. Uh -huh. Everybody wants an RV lifestyle. You're close. You got the Bronco already, so you're close. To yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to take it out. I have like a battery pack as well. You're getting close. Yeah. And then once you get once you start down that path, next thing you know, you're buying one of these. The Porsche one? No, I don't know. Just something okay. like it because you're out there longer periods of time. Uh -huh. And you start, you know. It's you, very uh, silvery. Eh? It's Even very. indoors? It's very silvery. Yeah. Shiny. There's a lot of metallic. But that's the Airstream so. thing, though. Yeah. Look at this little picnic table over here. Little tailgate. Okay. Come on, Will. Is that a TV? Hundred fifty thousand. You t you you buying or are you selling? <laughs> I'm uh, I'm not buying just yet. All right. It is very cool. Though. Remains to be seen. Yeah. I, I don't think they're making it yet. It's just strictly a concept at the moment. Uh, the camper. biggest departure from the traditional Airstream design comes at the rear, where a tall, broad wall takes place of the usual curved bulge in an effort to improve aerodynamics. The reimagined rear end also houses a split tailgate that opens into a deck. An awning combination, clearly inspired by the new Vision S camper van from Airstream's European cousin, Heimer. There's a surprising amount of innovation that takes place in the camper world. Mm. It's so purpose-built and purpose-driven. They're like, oh, this is how people are using it. Let's design it to do that. It's yeah. always inspired by an actual request or need. And it looks like a legitimate partnership here. Airstream Studio FA Porsche Concept Travel Trailer. Yeah, maybe it ends up getting made at one point. Look, they're chatting, they're touching materials. You know, when the dudes show up from Germany and they're touching the materials, you know, something might be going on. You might pull, you might pull your your vest out, your puffy vest. <laughs> puffy vest, like the other guy. Yeah, yeah. You know? No camera, no photographer. AI modeling agency opens its virtual doors. I actually saw this on Twitter. Um, this was a new thing. They're like, yeah, you know, photo shoot, please yeah. put your stuff on, on my AI models and oh. get selling already. They're perfect. They're perfectly imperfect, which is perfect. Let me see the fingers. No. Let me no. see the teeth. Don't get carried away. Well, you don't need it. We don't need, need we it. don't need that to sell product. It's called deep agency, a hundred percent AI generated and uses the very latest image synthesis models allowing users to pick a model and choose their pose. 
Virtual photographers could even choose which camera to use, the time of day, the shutter speed. I presume also the uh, aperture, the amount of like bokeh. And uh, virtual cameras, including Fujifilm X-T3, Canon EOS Mark II, and Sony A7. Maybe if you want it to look like it was shot on one of those cameras, yeah, or you're yeah, yeah. mixing this material sure. with stuff that was shot on those cameras. Oh, man. It's $29 a month, and you just get full access that includes high-quality photos of themselves. Oh, yeah, that's right. You get to also make a an AI version of you to do all your own personal modeling work. Dude, we should try this. Huh? 29 a month? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I look like this? Well, you'll, you're never looking like that. <laughs> Makeup and everything? Don't get carried away here, Well, You're going to look better, but you're not going to look that good. Yeah. It's not get carried away here. People are saying, why is this even a thing? Well, I mean... Uh, having modeling images is expensive, I guess, and takes time. You can't like quickly get the asset you're looking for as you're building the website or the e-commerce or the marketing campaign or whatever it is. So oh. you you just go full AI. I and, see fingers. Well, they don't look great. Two, three, four. Well, there's the right number, but yes, it's a it's that's a, a big giant, hand. That's a big a hand. Giant head. That's a big hand on that. On that lady, I'm not saying, I mean, she might have a big hand. Yeah, no. Oh, there's another one. Well, uh -huh. you stop it now, all right? You, be you better stop it looking around like that for hands. <laughs> you know, Will is AI's worst nightmare. He's like, I'll spot you. I'll track you down. Yeah, give me the fingers. Danny Postman is the Dutch entrepreneur that's behind Deep Agency, marketing it to social media influencers, marketers, and e-commerce product photography. Well, there you go. Pretty much nailed it. Uh, this tweet has received 22 million views and a generally negative reaction. Well, yeah. Well, Photographers and models are like, hey, man, excuse me. And other people are just like, I don't buy it. I'm not, uh, not going to be influenced by these fake AI generated influencers. Uh. And other people are like, what's well, a data set, man? Why do these people look like other people? Yeah. Sort of. This is the most convincing I've seen. You know, like Mid Journey, Stable Diffusion, like they, they always have like a very surreal look. But these ones, they look like uh -oh. a portrait, like Don't a straight up portrait. Are you saying they look like people? Well, I Except for fingers. Are you but, saying that uh, those two people look like people? Yeah. Those AI it's generated? It's very convincing. People look like people? Dude. Yeah, we should try this, eh? All right. Okay. Deal. Let's go. Yeah, we got it. You got it. Uh, can can I put some Kirkland on there? Yes. I need definitely. some. You need some Kirkland on yeah. those guys. Uh, town pu pu uh, punishes its politicians by putting them in a cage in a river. <laughs> <laughs> you is this real, Will? I don't know. There's a city in Italy where every got... year they put people in a cage and dunk them in the river by way of punishment. It was just a quick dip, man, for a bit of fun. Oh, it's like a dunk tank. Yeah. He's like, you put the guy in the dunk tank and it's all in good fun. And he's like, this sure. time only, you get to like embarrass me and dunk me. Embarrass a politician. You know, I don't mind it, actually. It makes people feel uh, you're not taking yourself too seriously. It could be a good practice. Maybe uh -huh. we need more of this over here. Is this the handshake at the end of the game? Yeah, maybe it is. You know, you know, listen, this year I didn't do everything well. You elected me. I, yeah. I did this okay. I screwed up over here. Now the crowds win? Throw me, in, throw me in the river for a bit, and we're all good. Lots of places around the world have their own select set of customs and rituals, but you'd be hard-pressed to find a town where they put the most annoying people in cages and lure them into the river. Yeah. Is there a video of it? Please turn off your ad blocking software. For anyone who ever asked Will about ad blocking software, it's only because of the show. People are like, don't you rely on ads? Yes, absolutely. It's He's trying to make it so it's a smoother uh, browser for the actual Unless live stream. you get tons of pop-ups and like... It's hard to load pages when you have... The article is like this tiny little snippet. Well, it's because we also, area. we have like 20 tabs open yeah. always. So if there's stuff right in the background, sometimes an ad will come up with audio on it. And yeah. just start playing. We can't find it. So, yes, we support the websites. And in many cases, we actually have the paid subscriptions where possible for the websites that we actually read and uh, and uh, view content. And now we're going to watch this ad for 30 seconds. Yeah, well, whatever. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. So wow. it is kind of comical. Yeah, like, it's good. Do, do we have audio? Throw the uh, audio on. 
crescendo rispetto a quella le roste That's all right, I love it. Verde, condannati la tonca il consigliere provinciale Claudio. I love it. I mean, it seems a little dangerous, maybe. Yeah. Il sindaco Andreatta e poi ha scelto di rimanere sulla comoda poltrona di Piazza Dante. Oh, they got a lot of boats out there just in case. Uh -huh. Look how beautiful this town is. Yeah. In compagnia dell'orso di Cadine e addirittura gli animalisti, quelli che per il dopo Danit hanno minacciato Tonka, Trentino, part of the festa, Vigilian celebrations which the city of Trento puts on every year in the second half of June. The events are meant to honor Saint Vigilio, the patron saint of the city, and one of the main events is the Court of Penitents, where famous figures from Trento who have disgrace themselves over the year are put on trial. <laughs> Some will be found innocent and spared a dunking in the river. For those found guilty, their punishment is to be condemned for the Tonka. And so this is your uh, punishment. This means a politician is going to be among those taking a dip in the waters because when you're looking for the person in the city who has screwed up the most, it's usually going to be a politician. <laughs> <laughs> so they dunked six people in there. Took a plunge in the river, and uh, uh, you know, then you move on with the rest of the year. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Nice looking town. Mm -hmm. WWE in talks with state gambling regulators to legalize betting on scripted <laughs> matches. <laughs> How crazy is this, dude? <laughs> what? Uh, How? How's that possible? Well, the idea is that um, no one will know. How? Who wins? How can you not know? Except for a very small amount of uh, people in the organization of WWE. That seems really sketchy. WWE has held discussions with state gambling regulators to legalize betting on scripted match results. Sources said WWE is working with EY, commonly known as Ernst & Young, to secure match results so they won't leak to the public. WWE creative executives don't plan to inform wrestlers who will win until hours before the match. Well, so they can't let anyone know in the hours leading up to it when they get the uh, script. Uh. WWE aims to have major sports betting companies offer bets on high-profile matches. That That's is crazy. crazy. This is like betting on, I mean, I guess, betting on the outcome of scripted shows, maybe? Uh-huh, uh-huh. You could do it. Movies? I guess. I don't know. If, I don't know. It enhances people's viewing yeah. experience who are into it. Betting on the Academy Awards is already legal. And available through sports betting applications, including market leaders FanDuel and DraftKings, although most states don't allow it. WWE executives have cited the Oscars betting as a template to convince regulators gambling on scripted matches is safe. <sighs> Dude, this is a slippery one, but I feel like there are um, gambling bets that already do this. So, for example, we always bet the Super Bowl... Um, like Gatorade dumping, like which color it is uh, at the end. But I feel like that could be fixed, you know, as well. Guy takes a big bet, makes the Gatorade. Yeah. Gets himself a bucket of a certain color. Sure, yeah. Hurries out there and dunks. I don't know, man. I don't know what to tell you, Will. So... Uh, there's enough people that already, that already accuse real, like actual sports of... Yeah, game being fi fixed. match fixing or yeah. the refs were in on it or whatever it might be. Never mind this one. Still, while Academy Awards voting results are known by a select few before they're announced publicly, they aren't scripted by writers. Even if regulator regulators allow gambling, betting companies would have to decide if they're willing to place odds on WWE matches, e matches even if it's legalized. Yeah, what are the odds? <laughs> yeah. Those discussions have yet to occur at betting firms. Well, the, the, listen, the gambling sites will figure it out. If there's a demand for it, uh -huh. they will somehow figure out how to make money on it. But it certainly is a precedent-setting thing because all of a sudden you're going to be betting on all types of fictional stuff, which mm -hmm. could enhance, I guess, th those viewing experiences for some. Hopefully sure. it's done in some kind of responsible way. I don't know how the hell you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, HP outrages printer users. Printer users. That used to be everybody. Yeah. Now it's just us. 
the aficionados. Oh, we print, but but not frequently. No, not at all. <laughs> Although Jack comes in quite a few. Times. He he likes the printing. He likes the hard copy. And he's a hard copy guy. There used to be a show called Hard Copy. Oh yeah. It was like an investigative show. Oh okay. You bring up a hard copy for me, real quick. I really don't have time for this right now, but just bring up a hard copy for me. Hard copy show. show. Yeah, American show. Look at this guy. 1989. Look at this guy. Are you kidding me? Like, he's about to bring the hard-hitting news. An American tabloid television show that ran in syndication from 89 to 99 and ag aggressive in its use of questionable material. It was the most uh, fringy, edgy. Mm. They would show footage that you'd be like, oh, I don't know if I should watch that. Oh. Do you know what I'm saying? Titular. It, like, in terms of crime scene investigations and interviews, very uncomfortable moments. Okay, yeah. yeah. Damn, dude, 1989 to 1999. Can we get, like, the intro or something on YouTube? Just real quick. I don't have time. I don't have time for any of this, by the way. Okay. So... Let me just... Uh, I don't have time for any of this. Oh, my Oh, God. why is this so scandalous? <laughs> oh, my God. Head Start transplant. Girl in a bikini. Okay, which one are you going to play here? I don't know if you want to play that one. Intro. intro. Let's just get the intro. Let's just get the intro. Okay. Yep. Let's here just get go. the damn... What? Copy. Bad idea. He's still loose in the building, and we don't know where he got the gun. We expect to have the suspect back in custody within the hour. Does Lampert have a record? What? Was there... Love scenes? Was it reenactments? You're the streak, and I'm the wacko. It's definitely reenact. No, I don't... Was it? Look at that. What? No, I know what we're watching right now is, but I don't recall it. Cl click on, like, the other one over there on the right. Get out of this one. Yeah, Which click, one? Yeah, this sure. One? Like, I don't know. The show, I don't... Was the show reenactment? No, it was like this. It was like this. Wow, the volume's really low. Yeah, look, it's real footage. I don't know what the hell that other thing was. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Uh, listen, it's all... It's like interviews or what? Uh, listen, it's mashed potatoes in my mind. Like a documentary? You know, you're talking about 1989. I was four years old in 1989. <laughs> you're watching hard copy. That's right! <laughs> That's what they put in... No, but I was probably watching more like in 95 or something or... Does that make sense? Yeah. 96? Yeah. Late night. No, I feel like my grandmother liked to have that stuff on. She's a lot of those type of things. Yeah. And some big TV or whatever. And I'm just a little kid just like, whoa, whoa. You know those type of moments? Well, yeah, now yeah, now yeah. kids have the internet, so never mind. Hard copies on TikTok every single day. Exactly. The hardest of copies. Yeah. Anyway, so Jack likes the hard copy. HP loves the hard copy because they'll sell you the printer ink. But uh, they they did an update. I can't believe this conversation is still going on of the third party ink. Uh, refill your ink. <laughs> Buy ink from a brand that isn't us. Like, oh. Well, you know how brutal this is. Yes. Every single time you want to print something. Yes. And you find out that there's no ink and... You buy the ink, and it's like three hundred dollars, <laughs> dude. It's expensive. Man. Yeah, they were giving you the printer for free. Yeah, in many cases, like actually free. Yeah, and you would just have to buy the ink, and that was their entire business model. Now they got a bunch more lawsuits. I guess they bricked some printers that had the third-party ink in there. Mm. Brutal. Dynamic security strikes again. And I don't know. I think we're at a point now where the printer game has shrunk so much. They've lo lost so much revenue. There was a time where there was so much printing going on. So um, many trees being destroyed. <laughs> so so much printing. Yeah. Uh, dude, I remember like when I had... One of the things we did when I had that little shop downtown was printing invoices well we would print some things but also we it was one of like our strange side businesses because you're just kind of hustling to survive so we had a couple of companies who we because we had access to different suppliers where we would be like we can also sell you ink 
It's just one of those things. And it would be toner cartridges or wax, I think, for Xerox at the time. It was such a big business because once you got the contract going and if there was enough printing going on, it was consistent. Mm -hmm. And obviously, even that, I'm guessing, has dried up to a certain extent as everything's uh, d digital at this point. But imagine when you have this, the sales of these, these consumables that people have to constantly keep re-upping, mm -hmm. and then it goes away. And then you keep trying to claw back whatever you had, and then people start getting finding even cheaper ink, and then you're like, okay, let's brick the thing. So I guess this is the latest version of that. Yeah. Uh, they, you update the thing and it goes, hey, non-HP chip detected. And the, the cartridge has been blocked by the printer firmware. And it will not work until you get some brand new HP cartridges for $100 each. And you're like, man, is it really worth Do I really need a hard copy that bad? Yeah, I just want to print one page. Oh, yeah. That'll now cost you. 100 bucks. That'll cost oh, you. This is, uh, this is pain. Bad. Feel your pain. Speaking of bad... Uh, Yeti Recall recalls 1.9 million soft coolers and gear cases. I have one of these. Yeah. I have um, the, not the M20. Is mine in here? It is. Oh my God. Mine's in here. I love this bag. The, can you click over to the other one? Uh, th that one. Yeah. M everyone. Well, a lot of people Wait a second. Have M30. Bag. No, I'm, is that one even bigger to the right of that one? This one's the honker, I think. M32.0. This is what I have in charcoal. Uh, the magnet lined closures can fail and result in detached magnets, posing a risk of serious injury or death if ingested. When two or more high powered magnets are swallowed, the ingested magnets can attract to each other or another metal object and become lodged in the digestive system. Oh. This can result in perforations, twisting, and or blockage of the intestines, infection, blood poisoning, and death. Oh, jeez. Holy cow. The, yeah, you should return this. They are very powerful magnets. I can totally attest to that. I'm not really sure how you ingest it. I guess it falls on top of a can and you don't notice. And I think it would be unusual probably yeah, for kids it's more rare probably for kids it's more of a concern when you got the high powered magnet what's interesting is because i've been a fan of this bag for a while the previous model uh had a zipper at the, no magnet uh -huh. it had a zipper but i hated the zipper because it was a tough zipper to use mm -hmm. it was a real tug in order to create the seal to keep the cold in um and then you would go in, and if you had it really filled up, the actual opening to stick your hand in would be pretty tight, and it would scrape against the zipper. And yeah, so, you told me about this issue. And on the new one, it's a magnet that opens, and it slaps shut on its own. So it's less likely to be left open, and therefore more likely to stay cold, because anybody who grabs a drink out, it just snaps shut on its own mm. at the top portion. But I knew that those were powerful magnets because I had that baby loaded with more than 30 beers in it and it would have no problem. Mm -hmm. it's, those are heavy boys in there as far as the magnets. Yeah. So I get it. If they get this lodged, those are, those are some powerful ones floating around and they'll give me a refund or replace it. But I don't know. The, so the new model, I guess they stitched it in there better or something. 1.9 million units sold in the U.S. and then 41,000 sold in Canada. One of them is mine. Um, I call them toll free or email them uh, or I can click on product recall on the product page on their website. This is a nice little, nice little warning here. Will you're letting people know if anyone has one of these. Yeah. So the, the, the recalled products, it's actually looking like four products here. You have my bag, which is the M32.0. This also seems to apply to the M31.0, which is weird because then I'm like, wait a sec. The 1.0 had a zipper, not magnets. Hmm. Weird. Sold between March 2018 and January 2023. Okay, mine is definitely one of them. Oh, so if you're going to get it replaced, you're going to get a cooler, not the actual... Ah, they, so they didn't fix it on the model. They actually just, they're just going to give you something different. Hmm. of similar values so for in the case of the m30 you can get the hopper flip 18 which is that's 30 cans 
and now you're only getting 18 cans. Yeah. That's not a good deal. <laughs> it's not. And then in this case, the M32.0, they'll give you a 65 hard cooler. That's not sufficient. That's not, I don't use my cooler like that. I got to carry it into the rink. Yeah. So that's not going to work for me. I don't and know. You want the one strap over your shoulder. I don't think I'm sending my back, Will. So you're going to take the risk? I'm going to put a risk warning it label on it. I'm going to put a warning label on it. Or I don't know what I'm going to do. Or maybe I can get one with wheels. Is there a Yeti with wheels? Can you go to Yeti's, Yeti's website? I don't have time for any of this. Can you go to Yeti's web, uh, website? Shout out Turtle3000. Okay. Oh, somebody is sending a Willie Do appreciation message. Turtle3000. He says, had to comment on the thumbnail. Looks so sensual with Elon's prepare thyself. <laughs> I yeah, think I think you maybe have nailed it on a thumbnail, Will. That was a fun one. Yeah. Have you finally nailed it on a thumbnail? Uh, you know, I try. That's uh, you got to love the feedback though, don't you? Mhm. Mm That's good for you, isn't it? Yeah, okay. I appreciate it. Maybe I'll just do wheels then. Hmm. Let me see. Can you scroll down? So to get a 30, well, I guess a 48 would be fine. These are these are pricey though. That's $600. Yeah. They are pricey, boys. Can you click on that 48 for me real quick? Yeah. Oh, can you click on a 24 real quick? 24 is not going to be enough. See, that's a thing. I, I was, oh, no, no wheels. No Go wheels. Click on a 48 for me real quick. Yeah. Blue, gray, or white. What the hell? They say 48, but then it fits 76 cans. That's huge. Yeah. Is there like a perspective? Like a person scale. for scale? I know. It's weird. How big is that? Oh, maybe. If, yeah, there you go. Oh, that's pretty big. Uh, it's not as cool as what I got. But I might have to do. What are you going to do? For my needs. I do like the the drain port, and I know you're a big drain port guy. Big, big fan. Drain plug. Yeah. So what are they selling right now for the soft ones? Uh, seeing as how they have to completely redesign. They're not. Yeah, right there. Soft coolers. That's not all. Yeah. And so the biggest they're going to do here is 18. That's not enough for me, man. 18 not going to do it. I'm dead. I got to go to the hard one or a different brand, I guess. Interesting development, Will. You really hit the nail on the head with that. You got my attention. Yeah. And I, I know that. my brother-in-law has this as well. Oh, it's a popular yeah, one. So. I actually got one uh, for my dad for Christmas as well. I love that thing. It's too bad about the magnets. It's very unique. It's much lighter weight than a hard shell. You can, even with a bunch of cans on it, you can carry it on your shoulder, no problem. It's very comfortable padding on the shoulder. And it's moldable. Like yeah. The, there's flex to it. Yeah, it's a totally different experience anyway. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do. I obviously don't want anybody ingesting the magnets. Uh-huh. Somebody told me get two 18s, 118 on each shoulder. Yeah. I guess it's possible. I'm not that crazy. Robots are now performing Hindu rituals, and some devotees fear they'll replace worshippers. I, this stuff is so interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Remember I was talking about the chat GPT rabbi the other day? Sure, yeah. And he just did the whole... Sermon? Is this sermon? The, there is a sermon. But it's not... <laughs> it's a different one. There is a sermon. Okay. Let's just say a talk. He gave a talk. Okay. The rabbi, and then at the end of it, he goes, he goes, gotcha. It wasn't even me. And they're like, woo. <laughs> they keep caring. Woo, best, best one ever. It's like, wait, guys, no, this is, uh, this is AI. The, the future woo, that's going to kill us. Hello. Best oh. one ever. Um, you remember, well, it wasn't me. Chat GPT. Well, in this case, it wasn't me. Instead, it was a robot. And in 2017, technology firm in India introduced a robotic arm to perform what's something called arti, which is a ritual in which a devotee offers an oil lamp to the deity to symbolize the removal of darkness. And they're like, well, the robot can, can do it perfectly well. Mm -hmm. So if scroll down, there's a video of it happening. The, oh, dude, why are they? It's just like a robotic arm. They didn't even try to like hide it. 
or anything. Didn't dress it up. Oh, that's so weird. What are you going to say? This what? is like an ancient tradition. And yet you have this like <laughs> arm that just can okay. completely overhaul. So there's like, a cultural, we're having, we have a cultural thing going on here, Will. Apparently... Now, I just read through this because, like, I, I was very curious about how this was ever acceptable. I saw this happening, and I'm like, exactly like you. My initial reaction was exactly like, like yours. Like, this doesn't make any sense. Why is there a robot with the candles? It's got to be a guy with the candles. And it's just an arm waving, like, the little dish. But apparently, around. the precision here matters. Because part of their worship is, like, how well they're doing as a worshiper Mm. Is something about the actual practice and the belief, but the practice, the execution of the ritual with precision. I know that seems crazy. Like you can't even really culturally wrap your head around that. Let me just read some of it here because I might not even be articulating correctly because I read okay. this actually two days ago or okay, whatever it was. Okay. Um, uh, where is it here? H Hindus and Buddhists express ritual performing automatons replacing people and whether those automatons actually might make better devotees you understand actually better worshipers will i know this is this is wacky in your mind you can't even historically they would already come up with and i don't know that these things are exactly the same but you may have some exposure to this if you've ever gone to any of these type of temples or whatever mm. pots that drip water continuously bathing rituals uh wind-powered buddhist prayer wheels they're like well those are kind of automatic worship mm. uh, well uh, well yeah okay go, go go back go back go back her, her, go back to the to the article okay because those are like nature whatever but <laughs> those are nature uh they, there's, there's an argument that this that this type of automation or technology interacting with religion does happen. Yeah. I mean, the Pope doesn't send pigeons to, you know, re relay a message or something. No, he's going to use a smartphone, right? Yeah, you're saying a, some sort of a... Blackberry? Rotary phone or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, keep going down, keep going down. It's missing the part that I need here. Uh, here we go. Modern traditions. However, the recent use of AI robotics and religious practice is leading to concerns among Hindus and Buddhists about the kind of future to which automation could lead. In some instances, the debate among Hindus is whether automated religion promises the arrival of humanity into a bright new, keep scrolling, uh, technological future, or if it's simply evidence of the coming apocalypse. In other cases, there are concerns that the proliferation of robots might lead to greater numbers of people leaving religious practice as temples begin to rely more on automation than practitioners to care for their deities. They have deities that have to be cared for, Will. It's like, they, it's like, it's a different way of looking at it. It has to be cared for. And the rituals are the caring for, like, as if it was being fed in a way, not food, but okay. ritualistic input. Scholars often note that these concerns tend to reflect one pervasive theme, an underlying anxiety that somehow robots are better at worshiping gods than humans are. Better. For Hindus and Buddhists, the rise of ritual automation is especially concerning because their traditions emphasize what religion scholars refer to as, as orthopraxy, where greater importance is placed on the correct ethical and liturgical behavior than on a specific belief or religious doctrine. That's according to this article, theconversation.com. In other words, the execution of the ritual and the, the uh, effectiveness of that execution is, in some cases, it's greater importance than your actual beliefs. And in that case, you're kind of like, hmm. The robot arm is a pass? The robot arm is on point. That's like, okay, I'm going to just try to bust out of here for a second to kind of create a picture. Imagine we have a robot in the studio that performs amazing camera moves. Mm -hmm. Focus, never misses. Boom. These type of arms exist for that purpose. Yeah. And also we're like, listen, Mo, the robot kind of nailing it. Like, I know you got the artistic part. I know you're a human and everything. Cinematography. But the robot's kind of doing its thing. 
And if you think about it in a truly practical way and you're like, no, actually the candle's just got to move this way. And it's got to be in front of the deity. And you can see how you can make that move. I'm not, listen, I'm not, yeah. I'm not, well, I'm just painting a picture. Uh -huh. I'm not saying on one side or the other. I don't know enough about it. This is my exposure level over here. Uh -huh. But it's like, it's a real curious one. Why is technology allowed to interact everywhere else, but not over here? Uh-huh. I mean, who 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 makes those rules? What that is, mm -hmm. but it also I also picture these futuristic religions with like, imagine robots worshiping gods, mm -hmm. and we don't have to do anything. We're like, yeah, yeah, the robots got it. Robots it's worshiping, worshiping robots, me. robots worshiping gods. Yeah, you know. Very I feel like I could be in cyberpunk and happen upon a temple and there's robotic arms doing rituals. Yeah. In cyberpunk, there's um, religions in there. There you go. As well. And it's like crossbred with like technology. Very strange. Yeah. Yeah. Deploying technological ingenuity to transcend human weakness because robots don't get tired. They don't forget what they're supposed to say. They don't fall asleep. They don't leave. Like, are they better? They're better. Are they better? Work. You know. I. Well, in this case, it's doing it perfectly, right? It's nailing it, dude. Because it's all pre-programmed. It can't do it wrong, really, unless what? it malfunctions. What's scary is the people around just cheering the robot. Be but but well, but not not cheering. They're I guess per they're part of the ritual exactly as well. exactly they're just not doing the candle holding it's all for the deity and they're like well if we really want to impress this deity let's bring out the thirty thousand dollar arm the deity's gonna be like wow damn you guys invested nailed it <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah you nailed the camera move you nailed the manufacturing move you nailed the whatever you nail as a robot yeah Guys, I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. I'm just saying, I'm just painting the picture. I'm, 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 I'm set, setting the premise here for, for how you make the justification. If you're in there anyways, I'm not, I'm not suggesting you go do it. I'm just saying that's, that's how it's going down. Mm. Wow. Okay. Well, are you, uh. Oh, is that it? Was that the final one? No, there's one more. Oh, okay. Uh, I feel like this is a complete opposite story. But, uh, You're absolutely right. This is the complete opposite story. Why aren't you I, I figured we can uh, do something fun since this is the last story. Um, it's the most dogs in a conga line, and it won a Guinness record. <laughs> a trainer had uh, over 10 dogs in a conga line and was able to wrangle them up and do its their thing. And I figured, like, this is... The epitome of uh, our society right now. <laughs> <laughs> like we have just like these dogs that are. I mean, it, it's it's a amazing feat to train all these dogs to get into a conga line. Right. But in what world is this useful? No, it's not useful at all. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's impressive. They got he got each one in order. Oh, it's kind of freaky, actually. In big to small, like they somehow know how to recognize their size. That one in the back, third from the back, looks like a psycho. This one, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the trainer is really buff. Gotta be. I gotta put that in there. <laughs> gotta be, dude. Manage all those dogs like that. Wolfgang Lorenberger, the trainer who previously set the Guinness World Record for most skips by a dog on hind legs in 30 seconds, set another record, the most dogs in a conga line. The adorable line featured 14 of his canines, each of whom effortlessly stood on their hind legs while perching their front legs on the dog in front of them. Lauren Berger broke the record that his young daughter previously held with eight dogs back in December 2019. He's like, eight? We can do better than that. Yeah. A few more. I'm going to crush your record, daughter. Daughter? Yeah. What do you think you're doing out here, Guinness? <laughs>
Yeah. He's like, don't you, you see these biceps over here? I get a, I get a bigger conga line yeah. than you. I'll muscle my way out of this. I don't know, Will. I mean, you say maybe it's not useful, but it, for his business, it probably is. He shows off that if he can get those dogs to do that, and then he, you, you need your dog trained. You're like, damn, look yeah. what that guy can do. It, uh, it's his version of an F1 car. He's like, check me out, man. He's flexing. Yeah. He, not not his biceps, but his training capabilities. Yeah. His training seps. Yeah. He like, he's like, don't you want your dog to be this well trained as well? Uh, I just think this was uh It is so weird looking. Quite funny. I agree with you. Just, uh, it, there is no world in which it's immediately useful, though. I, I can agree with that. They, these dogs, what do they want to be? They want to be like pulling a sled or doing some work or yeah. running around. They're not trying to like tiptoe on their hind legs like a weird guy holding all these food and whatever else but hey listen there's a lot of dogs you know that, do. there's a lot of dogs with crap behavior that could use some dude like this yeah yeah you know a bunch of jerks out there too and they have no training so if you want to be at the extent like the high-end level of training like this guy is then you have to be you have to be capable of pulling off stunts like that right yeah for sure for make sure. the case for it mm -hmm. so Oh, baby. Today is Friday. It's a Friday. And that means uh, we got the weekend in front of us. I hope everybody has a pleasant weekend. Spends time with their loved ones. Um, I'll definitely be doing some of that. That's for sure. My stolen car, I got that back or I get it back today. Oh, okay. Congrats. So Congrats. I don't know what I'm going to do about that because now I'm like, it's all nice and fixed and I like, is this going to get stolen again? Or? <laughs> Immediately? No, it's just like, it's weird the way it sits in your head after that. So so are you get a, getting an air tag or something? Oh, she's going to be outfitted. I don't know what. Okay. Uh, yeah. Put all types of gadgets on there and stickers and gadgets and skulls. Do uh, not enter. I'll put a pirate flag on it, on it, so people know. Like, I don't know what the hell's wrong with that guy, but. Oh, just a quick update on Costco. Thrower. Oh. Go. Um, we're gonna get it on Monday. I'm talking about Kirkland Drip TB yeah. TBH. Costco Kirkland Drip. Co Kirkland Drip go hard TBH. We're gonna do it. We're Monday. gonna go hard TBH. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Delivered today. I think it's actually delivered. So. All right, guys. I, ho I hope you have a nice, comfy nap this weekend. It doesn't have to be long. It could be 15, 20 minutes. A nice, cozy nap. Listening to classical? Uh, yeah, it could be uh, classical. Or it could be like Star Trek fangirl who actually, uh, it's Lou later. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can go. You can Lou later can take you right into the nap. Yes, thank you very much to everybody who joined. Thank you for all the super chats. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for everybody who joins us on these uh, live excursions. Thank you to everybody who watches after the fact. Thank you to everybody who watches the clips. Thank you to everybody who clicks on the bells. Thank you to everybody who yells at me on Twitter. Thank you to Costco for creating Kirkland Drip. And we will see you at the beginning of a fresh week mm -hmm. after you've recharged this weekend. Later, right. guys.